Hello everyone, and welcome to round 11 of the 2018 Tata Steel Chess Tournament. Already 10 rounds have passed, and uh, Ho Yifan only managed to score 4 draws. So she lost 6 games, and here she faces a former world champion Vishwanathan Anand uh, having the black pieces. So not, not an easy task, and uh, although she's not having the greatest tournament in her life, uh, look at, uh, for example, Fabiano Caruana. After 10 rounds, he only managed to achieve 4 points. Uh, so if you look at uh, Carlson, Giri and Mamidyaru who, who are already at 7 points, that's not, not quite quite an achievement as uh, Caruana is a member of the 2800 club with a rating of 2811 points. So 4 draws and 6 uh, losses doesn't seem that bad when uh, a player of uh, Caruana's caliber has only 4 points. So let's see this game and uh, how will she fare against former world champion. Uh, Anand has the white pieces and he opens the game with c4, the English opening. Uh, we have e6, knight to c3 and d5. Anand plays d4, transposes into the queen's gambit declined and we have knight to f6. c captures on d5, knight captures on d5 and d immediate e4. Uh, knight captures on, b th on c3, b captures on c3 and c5 by Yifan. And here there are a couple of options for Anand, you can go knight f3, bishop d3 for example, bishop b5 check maybe. Uh, Anand goes for rook to b1, and the reason he goes for rook to b1, uh, Yifan will probably play b6 and develop the bishop on b7, but nevertheless it, it exerts certain pressure on the b7 pawn. And also you want to see uh, how your opponent will develop his pieces, and only then will you decide what are the best squares for your, for your own pieces. So, uh, rook b1 might, you know, may or may not be uh, the better move here, uh, instead of maybe developing the knight or the bishop, uh, but it will, you know, it will make your opponent uh, think about uh, what's what, and it will, you know, pressure him. So, definite, definitely an interesting move, and definitely what differentiates uh, a great player from an amazing player. So, bishop to e7, and now Anand goes for knight to f3. We have castles and bishop to c4. Uh, bishop to d3 is also uh, also a good move, but uh, Anand uh, has some ideas of pushing d5 in the future, so the bishop on c4 uh, will add more pressure to the d5 square. We have knight to c6, uh, Anand castles, and b6 now. Bishop to e3, bishop to b7, and queen to e2. Uh, c captures on d4, c captures on d4, and rook to c8. Uh, Anand develops his other rook, rook f to d1. And uh, with this move, Anand uh, has finished developing all of his pieces, and now it's time to find the plan. Uh, we have queen to c7, and here it comes. Here Anand plays d5. And uh, what do you do here? Uh, you even played knight to e5, but uh, also an interesting move might be knight to a5, not allowing any exchanges in the center. Uh, but here, after bishop to b5, and here we can do one exchange, uh, that knight isn't looking very useful on a5, so instead after d5, Yifan goes for knight to e5. Uh, again, we have bishop to b5, e captures on d5, e captures on d5, and here Yifan exchanges that knight. Knight captures, queen captures, and we have bishop to c5, uh, offering more exchanges. Uh, here Anand pins the bishop, rook b to c1, and uh, queen to e7, unpinning. Uh, and bishop to f4. Again, Anand doesn't uh, allow the trade of bishops and is preparing the move d6. Uh, we have bishop to d6. Again, Yifan offers the exchange of bishops and stops the pawn from uh, being pushed forward. Uh, and here Anand plays bishop to c6. Uh, he doesn't allow the rooks to be traded. And if Yifan will capture the bishop, then he will already have his uh, passed pawn on the 6th rank. And uh, here you probably want to play something like rook c to d8. Uh, if, uh, if Anand exchanges, then you can capture with the rook, and then the other rook can be placed to d8, and already you have double rooks on the d-file. Uh, sorry. Uh, but uh, Yifan actually goes for the immediate exchange. Bishop captures on f4. Uh, we have queen captures on f4, and the bishop captures on c6. Pawn captures on c6. And here queen, uh, Yifan goes for queen to c7, uh, offering an exchange of queens. And uh, if you exchange queens here, queen captures, rook captures, you do have a passed pawn on the 6th rank, but uh, you, you can never push it uh, any further. Uh, the other rook will come to c8, and uh, you can't hope for anything with white here. Uh, if anything, black, black, black might be the one that has chances here, as this pawn will be lost at some point. 
uh, or, or it won't be lost, but uh, you know, neither side will be able to make any progress. So after queen to c7, uh, Anand plays rook to d6, uh, avoiding the trade of queens, and also now this rook is also protecting the c6 pawn. So a useful move, however you look at it. Uh, rook c to d8, here offering an exchange of another uh, of a rook, and now rook c to d1, doubling up on the d file. Uh, we have h6, Yifan makes uh, some breeding room for, for her king, and g3. Uh, Anand plays g3 just uh, for, for, for protecting his queen, uh, so now the, the rook on d6 can move, maybe even capture something, so if it's not with check, he will not lose his queen. Uh, rook captures on d6, rook captures on d6, and rook to c8. And uh, here, uh, the, the passed pawn on the 6th rank is very dangerous when the queens are on the board, so Anand will never exchange queens here. Uh, and he plays queen to e5, and it's a very dangerous position. Uh, you can't really improve with black, so probably the uh, best thing you could do is maybe play rook to d8. And after rook to d8, for example, rook captures, queen captures, uh, push c7. Uh, the queen will have to go to d7, and now queen to c3, uh, preparing pawn to c8. Uh, th this queen will have to block it, and now after the queen is on c8, uh, white has a much better position here, and he will probably win this game, it's very hard to say if black could hold this. So this would probably be the best idea for Yifan, although it's very passive. Uh, but after this queen to e5 move, uh, Yifan decided to play b5. What's the idea behind b5? Uh, I have no idea. Uh, of course, it can be captured since the rook would be hanging on d6, maybe, maybe to start pushing her own pawns on the queen side. Uh, but uh, the b5 move is actually a, a pretty, pretty big blunder, as here Anand plays queen to d5. And uh, here he has a terrible threat of playing rook to d7. So if the black queen captures on c6, Anand will capture on f7 and deliver checkmate. Uh, there's re really, really nothing black can play here. Uh, if, you, if you try something like a6, let's say, then, then it's just the same rook to d7. Queen captures, queen captures f7. Uh, this will lead to checkmate. Uh, any other move you can play, maybe queen to e7, if queen to e7, then rook to d7 again, and uh, there is really nothing you can do here. Uh, you have to move the queen, now comes queen captures, and after the king moves c7, uh, let's say you can give a couple of checks, check here, but after uh, king to h3, uh, it's, really, it's really over. Queen here, you will avoid the trade of course. Uh, here you can offer a trade again, but now rook captures, for example, on g7, and uh, this is just one line, uh, but every line favors white. If, now if you capture with the king, of course, queen d7 picks up the rook, if you capture with the queen, uh, then queen to f5 check will capture the rook on c8. So after this uh, king queen to d5 move, uh, king to h7 was tried, but now comes queen to e4 check. Uh, king to g8, and now rook to d7. And... Uh, here you can't capture the pawn on c6 once again, even though the queen is on e4, because if you capture it, uh, then comes rook to d8 check, and the queen is covering the h7 square, so the king has nowhere to go. You have to capture the rook, and then queen captures queen, you lose the queen and the game. Uh, so after this rook to d7, Yifan tried queen to a5, uh, but now simply c7, and uh, it's it's all over. Uh, it's really... There's really nothing you can do. If you, if you try something like b4, uh, you're gonna get uh, queen to f4, and uh, there is no defense against queen captures f7. If you try to defend this with uh, rook rook to f8, then you will get rook to d8. So very 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 hard position for black. Whatever Yifan would play here, it's it's lost. After c7, uh, Yifan tried rook to f8, and here after queen to e7, uh, she resigned the game as uh, there are simply too many threats. Uh, the most obvious is queen captures rook, after uh, king recaptures, then uh, rook will uh, deliver check, and then this pawn will be promoted. But uh, anything you play loses the game instantly. So yeah, uh, this is round 11. Uh, not not the best game for Yifan, although it was pretty close. You know, may maybe she could hold this with the line I, sh I shown you, uh, instead of pushing this pawn to b5, but we we'll never know. Uh, it's hard to say. I mean, I, I, I don't think she could hold that position against Anand, but it would definitely be better than this uh, b5 idea. So yeah, 
uh, two more rounds to go uh, uh, until the end of the Tata Steel Chess Tournament. While I was making this video, uh, I saw that uh, uh, Giri drew his game and Carlsen drew his game against Mamed Yarov. So uh, all three of them are now on seven and a half points, uh, sharing first place. Uh, and uh, Anand, after winning this game against Stefan, is now on seven points, so only half a point behind the leaders. And uh, one interesting thing Giri said uh, after drawing his game against Fabiano Caruana was that if there will be a tie break uh, at the end of the tournament, that most likely Magnus Carlsen will win it. As, uh, uh, like Giri said, Carlsen didn't lose a, a tie break since uh, some tournament in 2006. So, very interesting, but we'll have to wait two more days to see what happens. So that's the game. Uh, I will try and check out are there any more in more interesting games uh, from the Tata Steel. If not, maybe I will cover one game from the uh, Gibraltar uh, chess tournament as um, still di di ha didn't have any time to cover that tournament as they decided to, you know, have two tournaments, uh, two big tournaments simultaneously, which is, you know, not cool. But on the other hand, it's great that there are so many chess events that uh, they, they are overlapping now. So yeah, uh, I would like to thank Andrew Connock, uh, Aydin Ahmadli, uh, Isaiah Love, Douglas Perry, Oliver Tatlov and Morgan Gellert for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. And uh, I would like to thank everyone uh, for your uh, help in uh, translations of my videos, uh, whether it's the title, the description or simply adding subtitles. So thank you very much. Uh, yesterday I checked uh, if there were any since I don't get notifications for such uh, things and there were like 60, 60 translations, so th uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, if you haven't, uh, check out the subscribers video, there will be a link in the description below. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon.